That's right, I shoot with a Canon EOS R in 2022. Hi, my name is Caleb. I'm a boudoir photographer based in Bend, Oregon. This is a little bit of my work. And yeah, today I want to talk about using the Canon EOS R in 2022. And I do want to preface this by saying that I am not a camera reviewer. These are my opinions only based on how I shoot. So take everything with a grain of salt and your mileage may vary. Let me run you through my kit real quick. So like I said, I shoot on a Canon EOS R, their original EOS R from 2018. And in my line of work, I really only ever need to shoot on two lenses. So I shoot on the RF 35mm f1.8 and then the Samyang 85 f1.4. So with that all out of the way, let's get into my review. So I wanted to start by talking about the things about the EOS R that I really like. And the first thing that I really like is the body size and the handling. Before I took boudoir photography full time, I worked for a tourism marketing bureau. And so I was in charge of all of the video and photos. I shot on a Sony a7 III. I was always a little dissatisfied with the depth and kind of the secure grip that I felt that I had on the a7 III. So that's one of the things that I love about the EOS R. It's got that real deep, nice grip. Everything feels a little bit more solid and well-built. The next thing I really like about the Canon EOS R is C-RAW, which if you don't know, is a smaller, more compressed way to shoot raw photos. It doesn't actually ever show any image quality reduction, except like in super extreme cases. But honestly, I've never really found a limit to C-RAW. Again, comparing it to the Sony that I used to shoot on, the compressed raw that was on the Sony's, you definitely lost quality quick. So I really, really appreciate how the C-RAW and the EOS R keeps as much data as it does. Next thing that I love about the EOS R is the image quality. It's a great sensor. The images that I get out of it are beautiful. I really like having 30 megapixels, which gives me a lot of latitude if I need to crop or straighten things out without losing anything. There's more than enough dynamic range for what I shoot, and honestly, the way I light and shoot my scenes, I don't tend to need to do a lot of like exposure editing anyway. So I just really, really like the files and the image quality that come out of the EOS R. The next thing that I really, really love about the EOS R is of course the autofocus. That Canon dual pixel autofocus is still just phenomenal, even on their first generation mirrorless. I use autofocus for pretty much everything and I use servo mode with eye autofocus and it always works for me. I'm always able to get exactly what I need in focus. Now it does kind of stumble a little bit every now and then in like super low light or super high contrasty things, but nine times out of 10, it just picks the eye, it sticks on it, and it works great. And any review that you see of any Canon cameras is always praising the usability and the interface and the menu system just works really great. I really like having the quick menu screen, which is present in other platforms, but I think Canon has done the best job at having the most available on that quick menu screen. And the user interface is actually really helpful and easy to understand and, and not terribly complicated. And one more thing that I really, really like about the EOS R is its low light noise structure. So the way I shoot, I don't ever use like flashes or strobes or anything. I'm always using constant lights, which are by default quite a bit dimmer than a flash. So a lot of times I'll shoot portraits up to ISO 800, ISO 1600 even. And I actually like the way that the noise is structured. Rather than just kind of a digital mess, most of the time it feels kind of intentional. It almost feels like that kind of film grain that everybody likes to go after, which I think is pretty cool and definitely works for me with the way I shoot. So that's some of the things that I really like about using the EOS R still. And now for some of the things that I don't like. I get super stressed and nervous with just having one card slot. It really does suck. And even though UHS-2 SD cards can be pretty quick, it would be nice to have some of those faster card slots. I've personally only ever had like one or two SD card fail and one CF card fail, but that was because I rolled over it with an office chair. But just the idea that, yeah, there's no redundancy does get stressful. So I've gotten into the practice of the second that I'm home from a shoot, I'm importing and, and uploading all my images. And I always double check before I leave the shoot site to make sure that everything is still there. So it's not a deal breaker, but would it be nice to have two card slots? Yeah. Would it be nice to have a faster card slot? Yeah. Next thing that I don't love about the EOS R is of course it doesn't have any sensor-based image stabilization. So one of my lenses is image stabilized, the 35 millimeter, which I'm actually filming on right now. But my 85 millimeter doesn't have any image stabilization and so I'm not able to slow down my shutter as much or get as crispy of pictures in lower light without raising the ISO. It's not that big of a deal for me because most of the cameras that I've ever had never had image stabilization, but it would be nice. Okay, so the next thing that I don't love about the EOS R is its frames per second. If you turn off autofocus, you can get really fast images. But if you turn on servo continuous autofocus with eye detection, you only get like two and a half or three frames a second, which is fine. It's respectable, it's usable, but would it be nice to have 
a lot more frames per second, yeah. Especially with the way that I shoot, I shoot rapid fire because I find that it helps isolate those little moments a little bit more that are a little bit more naturalistic. So again, it's not the end of the world to only have like two and a half or three frames a second, but would I appreciate more frames per second with full autofocus? You bet. Another thing that I don't love is kind of the video limitations. I'm shooting this right now on my EOS R in 1080p all eye with Canon Log. And it looks pretty good, right? However, if you push C-Log a little too much, it falls apart fast and noticeably. And 4K is unusable on here. And I've kind of gotten used to only having 60 frames a second as slow-mo, so it doesn't super bother me. And I've also gotten used to upscaling everything to 4K and it still looks pretty good. Change the settings to 4K right now and it still holds up, right? But I do wish that there was a little bit more advanced video features. And of course, one of the obvious things that reviewers, when it first came out, always pointed out was the weird touch bar. It's not super useful, it's weird, it's sensitive. I have it set for ISO just because my 35mm lens I have the control knob mapped for ISO. But on my 85 it doesn't have one of the control wheels, so I have that touch bar set to ISO and it works, it's fine. I don't hate it as much as some people seem to hate it, but it's not my favorite thing. The more elegant solutions that they've done on like the R5 and R6 and R3 are way better, but it works. So let me answer the question that you probably came to this video to ask. Should you buy an EOS R in 2022? Yeah, honestly, it's fine. It's great. It does everything that you need it to. Obviously, if you're like doing sports or wildlife or something, probably not. But, you know, if you're doing casual portraiture, maybe a wedding, if you put a lot of faith in your SD cards, basic video work. Yeah, it's fine. It's great. I love it. I don't see myself upgrading probably, I don't know, to like the R6 Mark II or something. But those are my thoughts as a full-time boudoir photographer using the EOS R as my daily camera. Oh, and I did real quick want to talk about the lenses that I use and let me know in the comments if you want to see a review on each of these lenses. But with my 35mm, I love that little lens. It does everything that I need it to do. It works great. It has the image stabilization, which is great, and it's sharp edge to edge, and you can get some nice subject separation with that F1.8, so I'd definitely recommend it. And as far as the 85mm, I actually really love the Sammy Yang 85mm F1.4. It's definitely one of the cheaper options, but it is sharp as heck. And I know that a lot of people have had issues with it on the R6 and R5 because of the firmware updates, and Sammy Yang slash Rokinon doesn't make enough of their little, like, firmware updating plates. But on the EOS R, you don't have any of those problems. It does vignette quite a bit, and it does skew a little greener and a little warmer, especially against the Canon 35. But honestly, it's the lens that I use probably at least 75% of the time. So those are my thoughts on using the Canon EOS R in 2022. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to see more of my work, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that notification bell. And you can also check out my TikTok, my Instagram, my Facebook page if you want, and then also join me on Patreon. We have so much fun over on Patreon. I post all of my work as it was meant to be seen, not with any cropping or censoring or anything. So join me over there, and we'll see you next time.